The Greater East Asia Co Prosperity Sphere Japanese, da dong ya gong rong kwan hepburn, dai toa kyoaiken was an imperial concept created and promulgated for occupied Asian populations from 1930 to 1945 by the Empire of Japan. It extended across the Asia Pacific and promoted the cultural and economic unity of East Asians, Southeast Asians, South Asians, and Oceanians. It also declared the intention to create a self sufficient Block of Asian nations led by the Japanese and free of Western powers. It was announced in a radio address entitled, The International Situation and Japan's Position, by Foreign Minister Hachiro Arita on 29 June 1940. The intent and practical implementation of the Greater East Asia Co Prosperity Sphere varied widely depending on the group and government department involved. Policy theorists who conceived it, as well as the vast majority of the Japanese population at large, largely saw it for its pan-Asian ideals of freedom and independence from Western colonial oppression. In practice, however, it was frequently corrupted by militarists and nationalists, who saw an effective policy vehicle through which to strengthen Japan's position and advance its dominance within Asia. The latter approach was reflected in a policy document released by Japan's Ministry of Health and Welfare, an investigation of global policy with the Yamato race as nucleus, which laid out the central position of Japan within the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere, and promoted the idea of Japanese superiority over other Asians. <laughs> <laughs> development of concept Similar to the term, Third Reich, which was a military exploitation of a non military term proposed by Arthur Muller van den Bruck, the phrase, Greater East Asia Co Prosperity Sphere, was proposed by Kiyoshi Miki, a Kyoto school analytic philosopher who was actually opposed to militarism. An earlier, influential concept was the geographically smaller version called New Order in East Asia which was announced by Prime Minister Fumimaro Kano on of December 1938 and was limited to Northeast Asia only. The original concept was an idealistic wish to free Asia from European colonial powers, but soon, nationalists saw it as a way to gain resources to keep Japan a modern power, and militarists saw the same resources as raw materials for war. Many Japanese nationalists were drawn to it as an ideal. Many of them remained convinced, throughout the war, that the sphere was idealistic, offering slogans in a newspaper competition, praising the sphere for constructive efforts and peace. Kano planned the sphere in 1940 in an attempt to create a Great East Asia, comprising Japan, Manchukuo, China, and parts of Southeast Asia, that would, according to imperial propaganda, establish a new international order seeking co prosperity for Asian countries which would share prosperity and peace, free from Western colonialism and domination. Military goals of this expansion included naval operations in the Indian Ocean and the isolation of Australia. This would enable the principle of Hako Ichu. This was one of a number of slogans and concepts used in the justification of Japanese aggression in East Asia in the 1930s through the end of World War II. The term, Greater East Asia Co Prosperity Sphere is remembered largely as a front for the Japanese control of occupied countries during World War II, in which puppet governments manipulated local populations and economies for the benefit of Imperial Japan. To combat the protectionist dollar and sterling zones, Japanese economic planners called for a yen bloc. Japan's experiment with such financial imperialism encompassed both official and semi-official colonies. In the period between 1895 when Japan annexed Taiwan and 1937 the outbreak of the Second Sino-Japanese War, monetary specialists in Tokyo directed and managed programs of coordinated monetary reforms in Taiwan, Korea, Manchuria, and the peripheral Japanese-controlled islands in the Pacific. These reforms aimed to foster a network of linked political and economic relationships. These efforts foundered in the eventual debacle of the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere. History The concept of a unified East Asia took form based on an Imperial Japanese Army concept that originated with General Hachiro Arita, an Army ideologist who served as Minister for Foreign Affairs from 1936 to 1940. 
The Japanese army said the new Japanese Empire was an Asian equivalent of the Monroe Doctrine, especially with the Roosevelt Corollary. The regions of Asia, it was argued, were as essential to Japan as Latin America was to the United States. The Japanese Foreign Minister Yosuke Matsuoka formally announced the idea of the co prosperity sphere on 1 August 1940, in a press interview, but it had existed in other forms for many years. Leaders in Japan had long had an interest in the idea. The outbreak of World War II fighting in Europe had given the Japanese an opportunity to demand the withdrawal of support from China in the name of Asia for Asiatics, with the European powers unable to effectively retaliate. Many of the other nations within the boundaries of the sphere were under colonial rule and elements of their population were sympathetic to Japan as in the case of Indonesia, occupied by Japan in the early phases of the war and reformed under puppet governments, or already under Japan's control at the outset as in the case of Manchukuo. These factors helped make the formation of the sphere, while lacking any real authority or joint power, come together without much difficulty. As part of its war drive, Japanese propaganda included phrases like, Asia for the Asiatics, and talked about the perceived need to liberate Asian countries from imperialist powers. The failure to win the Second Sino-Japanese War 1937-1941 was blamed on British and American exploitation of Southeast Asian colonies, even though the Chinese received far more assistance from the Soviet Union. In some cases local people welcomed Japanese troops when they invaded, driving out British, French, and other governments and military forces. In general, however, the subsequent pragmatism and brutality of the Japanese military, particularly in China, led to people of the occupied areas regarding the new Japanese imperialists as much worse than the Western imperialists. The Japanese government directed that local economies be managed strictly for the production of raw war materials for the Japanese, a cabinet member declared, There are no restrictions. They are enemy possessions. We can take them, do anything we want. An investigation of global policy with the Yamato race as nucleus, a secret document completed in 1943 for high-ranking government use, laid out that Japan, as the originators and strongest military power within the region, would naturally take the superior position within the Greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere, with the other nations under Japan's umbrella of protection, China and other Asian nations, on their own, were regarded as too weak and lacking in unity to be treated as fully equal partners, and this in any case would not have been in in Japan's self-interest. The booklet Read This and the War as One, for the Japanese Army, presented colonialism as an oppressive group of colonists living in luxury by burdening Asians. Since racial ties of blood connected other Asians to the Japanese, and Asians had been weakened by colonialism, it was Japan's self-appointed role to make men of them again and liberate them from their Western oppressors from the Japanese point of view. One common principal reason stood behind both forming the Greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere and initiating war with the Allies, Chinese markets. Japan wanted their paramount relations in regard to Chinese markets acknowledged by the U.S. government. The U.S., recognizing the abundance of potential wealth in these markets, refused to let the Japanese have an advantage in selling to China. In an attempt to give Japan a formal advantage over the Chinese markets, the Japanese imperial regime first invaded China and later launched the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere. According to Foreign Minister Shigenori Togo in office 1941-1942 and 1945, should Japan be successful in creating this sphere, it would emerge as the leader of Eastern Asia, and the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere would be synonymous with the Japanese Empire. Topic. Greater East Asia Conference The Greater East Asia Conference took place in Tokyo on 5–6 November 1943, Japan hosted the heads of state of various component members of the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere. The conference was also referred to as the Tokyo Conference. The common language used by the delegates during the conference was English. The conference addressed few issues of any substance but was intended by the Japanese to illustrate the empire of Japan's commitments to the pan Asianism ideal and to emphasize its role as the liberator of Asia from Western colonialism. The following dignitaries attended Hideki Tojo, Prime Minister of the Empire of Japan, Zhang Jingui, Prime Minister of Manchukuo. 
Wang Jingwei, President of the Reorganized National Government of the Republic of China Ba Ma, Head of State of the State of Burma Subhas Chandra Bose, Head of State of Provisional Government of Free India Arzi Hukumat -e Azad Hind Jose P. Laurel, President of the Second Philippine Republic Prince Juan Waithayakan, Envoy from the Kingdom of Thailand Tojo greeted them with a speech praising the spiritual essence of Asia, as opposed to the materialistic civilization of the West. Their meeting was characterized by praise of solidarity and condemnation of Western colonialism but without practical plans for either economic development or integration. The conference issued a joint declaration promoting economic and political cooperation against the Allied countries. Topic. Members of the sphere Member countries and the year in which they joined the sphere Empire of Japan 1940. Manchukuo 1940. Mengjiang Inner Mongolia 1940. Republic of China 1940. Kingdom of Thailand 1941. State of Burma 1943. Azad Hind 1943. Republic of the Philippines 1943 Empire of Vietnam 1945 Kingdom of Cambodia 1945 Kingdom of Laos 1945 Topic <inaudible> Imperial Rule The ideology of Japan's colonial empire as it expanded dramatically during the war contained two contradictory impulses on the one hand, it preached the unity of the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere, a coalition of Asian races, directed by Japan, against the imperialism of Britain, France, the Netherlands, the United States, and European imperialism generally. This approach celebrated the spiritual values of the East in opposition to the crass materialism of the West. In practice, however, the Japanese installed organizationally minded bureaucrats and engineers to run their new empire, and they believed in ideals of efficiency, modernization, and engineering solutions to social problems. Japan set up puppet regimes in Manchuria and China, they vanished at the end of the war. The army operated ruthless governments in most of the conquered areas, but paid more favorable attention to the Dutch East Indies. The main goal was to obtain oil. The Dutch destroyed their oil wells but the Japanese reopened them. However most of the tankers taking oil to Japan were sunk by American submarines, so Japan's oil shortage became increasingly acute. Japan sponsored an Indonesian nationalist movement under Sukarno. Sukarno finally came to power in the late 1940s after several years of battling the Dutch. The Philippines. With a view of building up the economic base of the co-prosperity sphere, the Japanese army envisioned using the Philippine Islands as a source of agricultural products needed by its industry. For example, Japan had a surplus of sugar from Taiwan, and a severe shortage of cotton, so they tried to grow cotton on sugar lands with disastrous results. They lacked the seeds, pesticides, and technical skills to grow cotton. Jobless farm workers flocked to the cities, where there was minimal relief and few jobs. The Japanese army also tried using cane sugar for fuel, castor beans and copra for oil, daris for quinine, cotton for uniforms, and abaca hemp for rope. The plans were very difficult to implement in the face of limited skills, collapsed international markets, bad weather, and transportation shortages. The program was a failure that gave very little help to Japanese industry, and diverted resources needed for food production. As Karnow reports, Filipinos rapidly learned as well that co-prosperity meant servitude to Japan's economic requirements. Living conditions were bad throughout the Philippines during the war. Transportation between the islands was difficult because of lack of fuel. Food was in very short supply, with sporadic famines and epidemic diseases that killed hundreds of thousands of people. In October 1943, Japan declared the Philippines an independent republic. The Japanese sponsored Second Philippine Republic, headed by President Jose P. Laurel, proved to be ineffective and unpopular as Japan maintained very tight controls. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Failure. 
The co-prosperity sphere collapsed with Japan's surrender to the Allies in August 1945. Although Japan succeeded in stimulating anti-Westernism in parts of Asia, the sphere never materialized into a unified Asia. Dr. Ba Ma, wartime president of Burma under the Japanese, blamed the Japanese military. The militarists saw everything only in a Japanese perspective and, even worse, they insisted that all others dealing with them should do the same. For them there was only one way to do a thing, the Japanese way, only one goal and interest, the Japanese interest, only one destiny for the East Asian countries, to become so many Manchukuas or Koreas tied forever to Japan. These racial impositions, made any real understanding between the Japanese militarists and the people of our region virtually impossible. In other words, the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere operated not for the betterment of all the Asian countries, but rather for Japan's own interests, and thus the Japanese failed to gather support in other Asian countries. Nationalist movements did appear in these Asian countries during this period and these nationalists did, to some extent, cooperate with the Japanese. However, Willard Ellsborough, professor emeritus of political science at Ohio University, claims that the Japanese government and these nationalist leaders never developed a real unity of interests between the two parties, and there was no overwhelming despair on the part of the Asians at Japan's defeat. The failure of Japan to understand the goals and interests of the other countries involved in the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere led to a weak association of countries bound to Japan only in theory and not in spirit. Dr. Ba Ma argues that Japan could have engineered a very different outcome if the Japanese had only managed to act in accord with the declared aims of Asia for the Asiatics. He argues that if Japan had proclaimed this maxim at the beginning of the war, and if the Japanese had actually acted on that idea, no military defeat could then have robbed her of the trust and gratitude of half of Asia or even more, and that would have mattered a great deal in finding for her a new, great, and abiding place in a post-war world in which Asia was coming into her own. Propaganda efforts Pamphlets were dropped by airplane on the Philippines, Malaya, North Borneo, Sarawak, Singapore, and Indonesia, urging them to join this movement. Mutual cultural societies were founded in all conquered nations to ingratiate with the natives and try to supplant English with Japanese as the commonly used language. Multilingual pamphlets depicted many Asians marching or working together in happy unity, with the flags of all the nations and a map depicting the intended sphere. Others proclaimed that they had given independent governments to the countries they occupied, a claim undermined by the lack of power given these puppet governments. In Thailand, a street was built to demonstrate it, to be filled with modern buildings and shops, but nine tenths of it consisted of false fronts. A network of Japanese-sponsored film production, distribution, and exhibition companies extended across the Japanese Empire and was collectively referred to as the Greater East Asian Film Sphere. These film centers mass-produced shorts, newsreels, and feature films to encourage Japanese language acquisition as well as cooperation with Japanese colonial authorities. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Projected territorial extent. Prior to the escalation of World War II to the Pacific and East Asia, the Japanese planners regarded it as self-evident that the conquests secured in Japan's earlier wars with Russia South Sakhalin and Kwantung, Germany Nanyo, and China Manchuria would be retained, as well as Korea chosen, Taiwan Formosa, the recently seized additional portions of China and occupied French Indochina. The Land Disposal Plan A reasonably accurate indication as to the geographic dimensions of the co-prosperity sphere are elaborated on in a Japanese wartime document prepared in December 1941 by the Research Department of the Imperial Ministry of War. Known as the Land Disposal Plan in the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere. Da Dong Ya Gong Rong Quan Neo Keru Tu De Chu Fenin It was put together with the consent of and according to the directions of the Minister of War later Prime Minister Hideki Tojo. It assumed that the already established puppet governments of Manchukuo, Mengjiang, and the Wang Jingwei regime in Japanese-occupied China would continue to function in these areas. 
Beyond these contemporary parts of Japan's sphere of influence it also envisaged the conquest of a vast range of territories covering virtually all of East Asia, the Pacific Ocean, and even sizable portions of the Western Hemisphere, including in locations as far removed from Japan as South America and the Eastern Caribbean. Although the projected extension of the co-prosperity sphere was extremely ambitious, the Japanese goal during the Greater East Asia War was not to acquire all the territory designated in the plan at once, but to prepare for a future decisive war some 20 years later by conquering the Asian colonies of the defeated European powers, as well as the Philippines from the United States. When Tojo spoke on the plan to the House of Peers he was vague about the long-term prospects, but insinuated that the Philippines and Burma might be allowed independence, although vital territories such as Hong Kong would remain under Japanese rule. The islands north of the equator that had been seized from Germany in World War I and which were assigned to Japan as C-class mandates, namely the Marianas, Carolines, Marshall Islands, and several others do not figure in this project. They were the subject of earlier negotiations with the Germans and were expected to be officially ceded to Japan in return for economic and monetary compensations. The plan divided Japan's future empire into two different groups. The first group of territories were expected to become either part of Japan or otherwise be under its direct administration. Second were those territories that would fall under the control of a number of tightly controlled pro Japanese vassal states based on the model of Manchukuo, as nominally independent members of the Greater East Asian Alliance. Parts of the plan depended on successful negotiations with Nazi Germany and a global victory by the Axis powers. After Germany and Italy declared war on the United States on of December 1941, Japan presented the Germans with a drafted military convention that would specifically delimit the Asian continent by a dividing line along the 70th meridian east longitude. This line, running southwards through the Ob River's Arctic estuary, southwards to just east of coast in Afghanistan and heading into the Indian Ocean just west of Rykut in India, would have split Germany's Lebensraum and Italy's Spazio Vitali territories to the west of it, and Japan's Greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere and its other areas to the east of it. The plan of the Third Reich for fortifying its own Lebensraum territory's eastern limits, beyond which the co-prosperity sphere's northwestern frontier areas would exist in Northeast Asia, involved the creation of a «living wall» of Werbauer «soldier peasant» communities defending it. However, it is unknown if the Axis powers ever formally negotiated a possible, complementary second demarcation line that would have divided the Western Hemisphere. Japanese governed Government General of Formosa Hong Kong, the Philippines, Portuguese Macau to be purchased from Portugal, the Paracel Islands, and Hainan Island to be purchased from the Chinese puppet regime. Contrary to its name it was not intended to include the island of Formosa Taiwan. South Seas Government Office Guam, Nauru, Ocean Island, the Gilbert Islands and Wake Island Melanesian Region Government General or South Pacific Government General British New Guinea, Australian New Guinea, the Admiralties, New Britain, New Ireland, the Solomon Islands, the Santa Cruz Archipelago, the Ellis Islands, the Fiji Islands, the New Hebrides, New Caledonia, the Loyalty Islands, and the Chesterfield Islands. Eastern Pacific Government General Hawaii Territory, Howland Island, Baker Island, the Phoenix Islands, the Rain Islands, the Marquesas and Tuamotu Islands, the Society Islands, the Cook and Austral Islands, all of the Samoan Islands, Tonga and the Chilean Islands of Rapa Nui and Sala y Gomez. The possibility of re-establishing the defunct Kingdom of Hawaii was also considered, based on the model of Manchukuo. Those favoring annexation of Hawaii on the model of Karafuto intended to use the local Japanese community, which had constituted 43% c. of Hawaii's population in the 1920s, as a leverage. Hawaii was to become self-sufficient in food production, while the big five corporations of sugar and pineapple processing were to be broken up. No decision was ever reached regarding whether Hawaii would be annexed to Japan, become a puppet kingdom, or be used as a bargaining chip for leverage against the US. Australian Government General All of Australia including Tasmania. Australia and New Zealand were to accommodate up to 2 million Japanese settlers. 
However, there are indications that the Japanese were also looking for a separate peace with Australia, and a satellite rather than colony status similar to that of Burma and the Philippines. New Zealand Government General The New Zealand North and South Islands, Macquarie Island, as well as the rest of the Southwest Pacific. Ceylon Government General All of India below a line running approximately from Portuguese Goa to the coastline of the Bay of Bengal. Alaska Government General The Alaska Territory, the Yukon Territory, the western portion of the Northwest Territories, Alberta, British Columbia, and Washington. There were also plans to make the American West Coast comprising California and Oregon a semi-autonomous satellite state. This latter plan was not seriously considered, it depended upon a global victory of Axis forces. <laughs> Asian puppet states Manchukuo Chinese Manchuria Mengjiang Outer Mongolia territories west of Manchuria. Republic of China. Other parts of China occupied by Japan. East Indies Kingdom. Dutch East Indies, British Borneo, and Christmas Islands, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, and Portuguese Timor to be purchased from Portugal. State of Burma. Burma proper, Assam, a province of the British Raj, and large part of Bengal. Kingdom of Malaya. Remainder of the Malay states. Kingdom of Cambodia Cambodia and parts of French Cochinchina. Kingdom of Annam Annam, Laos, and Tonkin. Empire of Vietnam Political parties and movements with Japanese support Azad Hind Indian Nationalist Movement Indian Independence League Indian Nationalist Movement Indonesian Nationalist Party Indonesian Nationalist Movement Kapisanan ng Paglilingkod sa Bigong Pilipinas Philippine Nationalist Ruling Party of the Second Philippine Republic Kesatuan Malayu Muda Malayan Nationalist Movement Khmer Isarik Cambodian Khmer Nationalist Group Dobama Aziawan We Burmans Association Burmese Anti-British Nationalist Association See also Hachiro Arita, army thinker who thought up the Greater East Asian concept Sato Nobuhiro, alleged founder of the Greater East Asia concept East Asia Development Board Ministry of Greater East Asia Greater East Asia Conference November 1943 List of East Asian leaders in the Japanese sphere of influence 1931 Jewish settlement in the Japanese Empire Axis power negotiations on the division of Asia Hako Ichu Flying Geese Paradigm Racial Equality Proposal <laughs>